Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen an action scene that was so intense, so stressful, you think you might actually cry? Didn't think an action scene could do that? Yeah, neither did I until I rewatched The Incredibles. Oh, Danny, you're such a baby. You get scared over anything. Yeah, yeah, I read your comments, but hear me out. The Incredibles is so ruthlessly dark, so wildly intense, that it actually almost got me to cry during an action scene. And yeah, it's a children's movie. But I think the mark of any great family movie is that not only can you enjoy it as an adult, but it actually gets better the older you get. Avatar, Finding Nemo, Spirit Legend of the Cimarron. All of these children's properties get better with age because their contexts change as you get older. Take Avatar, for example. A goofy, colorful show about the horrors of war and the morality of taking a cruel dictator's life. But kids don't know that. They think it's just a cool adventure show with fun characters and interesting powers. Hours. Kids are dumb. They don't know anything about the horrors of war. When you watch the headband as a kid, you're like, oh cool, they're doing Footloose. Hey ma, get dad, they're doing Footloose. But then when you watch it as an adult, you're like, Oh, the Fire Nation has completely rewritten their history books and indoctrinated their youth to fit their ideology. Jesus. Now I know I'm sort of becoming famous for having incredibly long preambles at the beginning of all of my video essays, but I swear I'm approaching a point. You see, when I watched The Incredibles as a kid, I thought it was just a fun action movie. And it still is. The movie holds up incre- Mm. The movie holds up insanely well. Not gonna get me, not gonna give it to you guys that easily. It's still super funny, the writing is some of Pixar's best, all the characters are memorable and deeply complex. As a kid, it was fun, but as an adult, it had me on the edge of my goddamn seat. Also, like, unyieldingly emotional. This movie is so much sadder than you remember it being as a kid, and that's because the themes are so adult. The film opens with these old interviews of Mr. and Mrs. Incredible talking about their lives as superheroes. And without knowing what this film's about, you can already tell from the presentation alone that this scene is showing us these characters in their prime, and that it's foreshadowing the fact that they're probably gonna be unhappy with where their lives have ended up. Now, this isn't really the case for Elastigirl, who's proud of the family she's raised, and the life she's made for herself. But Mr. Incredible is deeply unhappy with his life. He loves his family, but you can tell he doesn't want to be a father. He doesn't want to be a husband. He doesn't want to be anything other than a superhero. Anything other than Incredible. Even the name is kind of sad. The dude went from being Mr. Incredible to Mr. Ordinary. He feels like his worth is determined by how impressive he is, and everyone in his life is telling him not to be. And these themes of inadequacy are expertly woven throughout the film's brutally realistic dialogue. Anytime Mr. and Mrs. Incredible get into a fight, you're just like, Okay guys, you good? Should I leave the room? I don't want to be here anymore. There is so much depth to these scenes, and it's horrible. They're so uncomfortable. It's so hard to watch. Bob's stuck in his past and feels like his wife is nurturing his insecurities rather than supporting him. Uprooting our family again so you can relive the glory days is a very bad thing. Reliving the glory days is better than acting like they didn't happen. Yes! They happened, but this, our family, is what's happening now, Bob. Meanwhile, Helen wants Bob to take their family seriously rather than treating them as an inconvenience. Look at how layered this dialogue is. He is moving from the fourth grade to the fifth grade. It's a ceremony. It's psychotic. They keep creating new ways to celebrate mediocrity, but if someone is genuinely exceptional, this then This is not they... about you, Bob. There's so much subtext here, and it's clear that both characters are justified in their pain. And look at how brutal this dialogue is. Bob tries to say someone from getting mugged and this is what he's told. What can I say, Rick? Nothing you haven't said before. Someone was in trouble. Someone's always in trouble. Wow, what a lesson. The world sucks, so get over it. God, what is this, Watchmen? Why is this such a bleak movie? But all right, I tease you guys with an action scene and so far all I've talked about is the depressing life of an insurance worker. Let's get into the scene that is way too intense and made me realize that this film is a masterpiece. And before you ask, no, it's not the scene with the balls, but my God, what the hell were they thinking. Quick tangent, this scene is too damn scary. The room is blindingly white, which for some reason is already unsettling. Then Bob gets pelted by these metallic goops, and then all of a sudden the movie's edited like an avant-garde film with the shots alternating between cannons firing and Bob screaming for his life. Then we get this shot of him presumably suffocating before his vision goes entirely dark. Yeah, cool, what a fun movie, Pixar. Let me just call my niece over right now and show her this movie. Can't wait to have her calm me down at 3 a.m from the inevitable night terrors this film gives me. I'm sure it'll be a great bonding experience. Thanks for bridging the gap between my family. This scene was edited by a psychopath, but no, it's not even the scene that stressed me out the most. I'm talking about the plane crash scene. Ah! 
Hey, Pixar, calm down. What are you doing? This scene is insane. And I know you're all thinking that I'm overreacting right now, and maybe you haven't seen the movie in a bit, so let me paint you a picture. Helen's flying to the secret island where Bob is being kidnapped and tortured. And it's at this point that I'd like to once again remind you I'm describing a children's film. Then Syndrome fires some missiles and Helen has to dodge them. And that's fine, that's like standard action movie stuff. But then shit gets real. Bob finds out that it's Helen on the plane, and so he's begging Syndrome not to kill her. But she's a superhero, you know? So she's got this under control. She tells Violet to put a force field around the plane, and this is where the movie sets itself apart from a lot of other superhero action scenes. Dash and Violet know their parents used to be superheroes and get into dangerous situations, but they've never experienced any of that firsthand. From their perspective, they probably think their parents bust into a warehouse, beat up some bad guys, and make it home in time for dinner. You know, you're still standard Saturday morning cartoon action hero stuff. But this is the first time they're witnessing their parents not in control of a situation. This is such a relatable and like scary feeling because when you're a kid, you just kind of expect your parents to be able to solve any situation. And as you grow older, you start to realize that your parents have flaws. They don't have the answers to everything. But as a kid, you don't know that when there's a problem, you just expect your parents to be able to solve it. And this is the first time that Dash and Violet are coming to that terrifying realization that their parents may not always have everything under control. And rather than Dash saying some cute, funny quip to ease the tension of the scene like you might see in some other superhero movies, you instead get these two reaction shots. Dash nervously looks to his mom for help, Helen yells at Violet to get her shit together, and Violet starts hyperventilating. Oh my god, I just got chills repeating it. Yes! Yes, Pixar! Yes, superhero movies! Do more of this! It feels like they're in actual danger right now. They're panicking, they're terrified. Violet and Dash are looking to their mom to protect them, and she isn't sure that she can. That's a horrifying situation from every character's perspective for different reasons. And I really think think more superhero movies need to take their action scenes this seriously. It may be an action scene, but it's still a scene, and scenes are about emotions. I think a lot of movies forget that. Just because you're having two characters fight and getting lost in the spectacle of that doesn't mean it's not still important to have the characters conveying emotion. This scene is full of such intense emotions and it heightens the drama so much. If your characters aren't afraid for their lives, why should your audience be? Violet's not getting her shit together, so Helen begs the nearest radio tower to disengage the missiles and tells them that there are children aboard. Bob hates this. No! Helen's like, Violet! And Violet's like, I'm trying! But she's never done this before and the missiles are closing in. But thankfully, Violet believes in herself and she's able to make a force field using the powers she's never trained in before and save everybody. Just kidding. She can't do it and Helen dives out of the cockpit and desperately grabs her children as the missiles destroy the plane. The kids fall to what is sure to be their impending deaths before Helen regains consciousness and saves them. Meanwhile, back at Syndrome's, Bob thinks his entire family is dead and makes an actual attempt at Syndrome's life. Mirage dives in the way and Bob goes, I'm gonna kill this woman. Release me. Now! Or what? I'll crush her. And Syndrome's like, do it, bitch! I wanna see it! <laughs> Show me. This is too dark, guys. What is this dialogue? Who hurt you, Brad Bird? Bob thinks his children are dead and just threatened to kill this woman. Pixar, what happened to you? You used to be so edgy, so ballsy. Look, I don't typically wish any ill will on anybody, okay? I'm a very nice person. But I hope Pixar's creative lead gets cheated on in the near future to bring back some of the studio's edge. This scene is amazing. The action is tense, the drama is raw, the dialogue is brutal and clever. You're weak, and I've outgrown you. My heart was genuinely racing the entire time. I wish family movies would have balls like this again. And the most impressive part of this sequence is that I'm not even finished talking about it. After the plane crash, Helen takes the kids to an abandoned cave on the island and gives them the absolute coldest talk. They won't exercise restraint because you're children. They will kill you. She's just like, hey guys, I know supervillains look fun on TV, but uh, these are terrorists. These are terrorists and they will kill you. They don't care that you're children. They have no remorse. They want to murder you. Okay, see you later. And then Violet rushes out and she's like, hey mom, I'm sorry I couldn't save us back there. Which is like already brutal, you know? This is like the one time she's engaged in her mom's old profession with her. And like, she thinks she disappointed her. And you're just like, 
Ah, oh, geez, Violet, come on, it's all right. But then Helen's just like, look, I'll be straight with you. You disappointed me. You gotta get your act together or these people will kill you and your brother. And you're just like... All right, Helen, damn! This whole sequence from beginning to end is so brutal, but that's what makes this movie so memorable. Like Helen to her kids, this film doesn't talk down to its viewers. The scenes that are meant to be dramatic aren't overshadowed by intrusive comedy. They're intense, they have momentum, the adults speak like adults, you know? This is genuinely one of the best superhero movies ever made, and without a doubt, Pixar's darkest film. I would love to see Pixar make a movie again that's this grounded and mature. I know I said in my Turning Red review that Turning Red is the most mature movie Pixar's put out in a while, but it still doesn't hold a candle to this movie. But who knows, maybe Lightyear will blow us all away when it comes out later this year. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. And check out some of the other content on this channel as well. And if you want to support the channel and make sure I can keep putting out as much content as I do, make sure you subscribe to my Patreon. There, you get an exclusive video every month not found anywhere else, as as well as access to my private Discord server. Let me know in the comments what other movies, shows, or games you'd like me to cover in the future, and I will see you guys next time. But now I always seem to free.